Hello, hello, welcome back. And today we're talking about how to be absolutely beautiful and how it's backed by science. So we're going to go through things to see, like, I, I, I won't use the word evolution in the sense of meaning like we came from, like, you know, a toad or something, but I'm going to use it in the sense of how we've been for like thousands of years and the science that's gone into all of that and how we can use it to our advantage. And this will probably be from a different viewpoint than you've ever seen before. So definitely stick around. And if you're new here, my name is Amanda and we talk everything about how to empower women and help them level up and be the best version of themselves and step into their confidence and become their own dream girl, like who God made you to be. So let's get started. So how to be beautiful. So let's take this from a scientific perspective. So all throughout, you know, if you see the animal kingdom or humans or, you know, just the science behind it, health equals beauty. So an animal who is healthy, like you can, let's, let's take a horse, for example, just imagine the most beautiful horse. It's like, it's black coat is just so shiny. It's hair is long and thick. It's, you know, it's body is symmetrical. It's fit. It's, you know, not extremely overweight. Um, you know, its eyes are glowing. It has this spirit. It's this liveliness. I kind of tap into that. And I know this will probably like offend some people. So if you take it that way, I'm sorry, but this is what, you know, if you read science and study evolution, like if you've gone to college and taken those classes, but anyhow, those of you who are meant to hear it, will hear it. So we'll just go with that. So let's switch this to people. Someone who is absolutely healthy is beautiful. You know, I think the natural beauty is truly what makes you shine from within. It makes you glow, you know, because a lot of times you can see all these women who we think or a lot of people idolize as beautiful. And I'm not saying they aren't because I believe God has made every woman beautiful. It's just we let ourselves go. But a lot of these women that people idolize, you know, it's all made up, you know, you don't see them how they actually are. You see them when they've done all this Botox and fillers and um, you know all this makeup, extremely heavy makeup, and like probably fake hair and you know changed bodies and you know that they've like modified in a, in a way, or they have. And then you don't even just see that. Then you see it on their social media where it's been photoshopped, or on magazines where it's been photoshopped and all kinds of things. You know, my mom was telling me about, she's been watching, she really likes Ashwarya Rai. Um, she's an Indian Bollywood actress. And she was looking at this interview with Oprah and then she was looking more into Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah was saying that, you know, a lot of people, they see me on the cover of a magazine and they want to look just like me and they don't realize everything that goes on behind the scenes. Because she was saying that, you don't realize I have like, I forget the number, like 20 people, 21 people or something like that, 2021, 20, um, you know, checking me to make sure I look absolutely perfect for the photo. She, um, like, she's like, see my collar? There's even a person that is dedicated to just making sure my collar looks perfect. You know, like that detail. And here all of us like younger people or young girls or even older women, we are all expecting to look like that when we don't have a team of 20 people watching after us, you know, every second of our life, you know, or at least for the photos. So, you know, it's made up and we need to realize that. But anyhow, going back to what we were saying of health is beauty. Let's talk about the horse. And, you know, when you just think of like health, it makes, it's a beautiful horse. When you think of this healthy horse, you picture beauty. And so let's take this to people. So how do we use this so we feel attractive and are perceived as attractive? I mean, I think people can take this to too far of an extent, but I don't think there's anything wrong with looking the best 
you can with what you've been given. You know, we're, as women, we're made to want to look nice, you know, that's already inside of us. So, I mean, like, why are we very particular about the clothes we buy? Or I'll wear this and not this, or, you know, all those things. So, okay. So going to how this translates to people, when you think of health equals beauty, like that's really what it is. When you think of a healthy woman or a beautiful woman, like just naturally beautiful, not like someone who's just like plastered herself, you know what I mean? Um, you think like she has long, beautiful, luscious, full hair, you know? You think her skin is glowing. Her eyes are bright and you can just like see that twinkle in her eye. You know, she has a spark in her step. She's lively, you know, she's full of life. You know, like vivacious is a word that comes to mind. Um, you probably are imagining she's, she takes care of herself. So she is fit. She's eating healthy. She's taking care of her body. I mean, it's the only one we're given. So we might as well take care of it while we have it. And I don't know, what else? Do you guys think of also the symmetry like i was saying with the horse like that is one thing that just bio biologically like from our dna like men are just attracted to like symmetry and that's for like i'll just say like the evolution reason of how we would be attracted to each other because that equals health you know because you see like if someone isn't quite symmetrical we always know that well there's something a little bit wrong you know I don't know how to put this the politically correct way, but you know, like if you think of someone with like, you know, Down syndrome or something, you know, they just look a little bit different and you can tell. And so we can always tell these things subconsciously. So, you know, we can always use all of this information to our advantage. So like if we know, like if, I don't know, let's say you want to be dating for marriage or you just want to look good just for yourself so you are confident you know because looking the part is the number one thing for confidence and besides of course mindset is number one but you know if you just focus on your health like eating right sleeping good being happy um you know achieving that deep inner peace um you know taking care of yourself wearing things that make you look good and that you feel amazing in you know, all of those things will make you appear like the most confident and most beautiful woman in the room. And people will notice. And if you're looking for somebody, like men will notice. You know, they, this is another thing. If you look at anything, um, you know, any survey or whatever, men will always say they're looking for a woman with confidence. And we as women, we take it to mean like, oh, I need confidence. So I need to be this independent woman who's like, making all this money and just like has this swag and kind of like talks down to people or I don't know what we think of, but that's what we think of when we think of confidence. But for men, what they mean by confidence is a woman who is comfortable in herself, comfortable in her body, comfortable with her own imperfections and is completely at ease and confident in herself. You know, she's out of her head and she's actually present and in her body. So anyways, I don't know how you'll make this relate to whatever, but I just thought that would be helpful. So that was a little part of how to be absolutely beautiful, proved by science. And now I'm going to go in exactly how you can achieve this, because this is for everybody. It definitely was for me, because if you saw our people who've known me when I was younger, I was so like insecure and shy. And I was like, I am so not beautiful. No one will ever want to marry me. Like, how I ever find somebody? And because of that, I didn't even, like, work on myself. I would just be eating so many sweets. And I was, like, a little bit fat. Like, I could tell. Like, I just kept on getting bigger sizes that I'd have to be wearing. And I can tell you that, honestly, like, I was not confident because I knew I didn't feel good. And now, like, fast forward and I've been doing all of these things. And now I can walk in a room and, you know, I'm confident and I'm happy with how I look and I'm happy with, you know, because when you're just happy with how you are, 
you can walk in a room and just be like totally confident. You don't have to compete with anyone. I mean, it doesn't mean you see people as less than you, of course not. You, but at least finally you see yourself as equals with everyone else instead of in the one down position. And besides all this, even not even to get it for other people, you know, we're not doing this for other people. We're doing it for ourselves. Because when we feel good, we can bring our best self to everything we do, our workplace, our family. We bring our best, you know, mindset and attitude and mood and everything, you know, it affects everything. So I'm going to give you a 30 day challenge. If you guys are, you know, high achievers like I am, I had gotten this 30 day challenge from a lady I really respected and admired and she had the life I wanted. So I, you know, she had laid out these steps and I was like, I'm going to do that. So if you like that, then definitely do this. So definitely take like a before and after photo. So take a photo like now so you can compare it to later when you feel good because we always forget what we were before. So first, of course, have your why. Like, why are you doing this? Like for me, if you look at, I'm going to look at what I had. I had my why as I know I'm going to look and feel great, slimmer and toned and energized. And if I don't, I'm going to feel disappointment. I'll be the same. I'll feel fat and bloated and tired and depressed. That was my why. I had a positive reinforcement and a negative one and they work. Okay, so number one, exercise every day. I know this is common knowledge, but honestly, how many of us actually do it? You only have to do it for 20 minutes. You know, it's, if you read the book Atomic Habits, it shows that you just have to do these small things every day and it makes into huge results later. It's like the compound effect. You know, and this goes for positive or negative. Like if you eat a bag of potato chips, chips and a soda every day, that's going to compound negatively over the course of a year. Whereas if you drop that and all of a sudden have a green smoothie every day for the course of a year and exercise for 20 minutes, you're going to be like a completely different person. It's crazy. And I know this because I had this happen to myself. So exercise every day, just for 20 minutes. You honestly don't even need to do more than that. So like do squats, you can do some weights. Um, I like to do like yoga, Pilates, that type of thing. Um, there's a workout that I really like by Romy Strid, S-T-R-I-G-J-D. And she is a Victoria's Secret model. And I really like her ab workout. So you can go check that out. She has all kinds of workouts and I really like them. They were, they kicked my butt in the beginning, but you get better and I've seen results. So maybe you can too. And, um, and definitely do stretches. Stretches is a big thing. We need to move our bodies. Like if we look back to the science perspective of how we've been for thousands of years, we've always moved our bodies. We've always been, you know, it was very, rare for there to be an overweight person because food was actually scarce, you know? So health, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with all of that. Um, definitely be drinking your water. I know this is another common one, but how many of us actually do it? Be honest. So you need to drink at least six glasses of water a day. So what I like to do, what makes it easier for me is I drink a glass before breakfast and then one a little bit after breakfast and then one before lunch and then after lunch and then before dinner and then after dinner you know, in that sort of time frame. So that way I don't have to think and I get all my water in. And this is the big one, okay? Because you can exercise all you want, but if you don't have the diet in order, you're not gonna see results. And I know this because I had been exercising since I was like 15 or 16 and, or yeah, 15 or 16. And I didn't change my diet until I was like 17 or 18. And I could definitely tell the difference. Like I could be exercising crazy, but my stomach would still be fat. And I'd, if I was wearing something nice, I would be constantly wanting to suck my stomach in so that it would like look nice. So I never saw results until I actually changed my diet. So this is a big one. What I really like, it's called the wheat belly by Dr. William Davis. So for 10 days, you'll see a difference. For, for 10 days, take out all uh, wheat and grains and sugar and dairy from your diet, okay? And this will probably be really tough for you guys, but you will definitely see like, feel your stomach is just slimmed down and you'll feel better in your energy, like all kinds of things. Okay, if you wanna look up the stuff on sugar on how absolutely bad it is, I've listened to podcast after podcast on it because it, I will know it's bad, but then I'll see a delicious looking sweet and then want to eat it. 
and then I'll feel bad afterwards and I'll feel good and it's like this circle effect. So just don't, you know, eat the sugar. And you can definitely look at all of the reasons because if you have reasons, it makes it easier for you to stand by it. And definitely give up all wheat and grains. So not just a gluten-free diet, like stay away from all grains because that causes like inflammatory response and all kinds of stuff. Like if you want to check out his stuff, definitely look into it. It works. It worked for me. It's worked um, for a lot of people. And I've never seen a diet that actually works, but just having meat and vegetables with some fruit, like you can't get any healthier than that. Because if you look at, again, going back to the science, if you've looked at how we've been for thousands of years, we first hunted to eat and then we started you know, to like gather berries and like these and green stuff, grass, I don't know what we ate. Um, or later we grew crops. And that's how our DNA is made to handle all those things. So when we eat all this chemical stuff or all of these genetically modified grains and stuff that there are nowadays, like they're not the same as how they used to be, it can it causes our bodies to break down and even if we're young. You know, so all of this helped also just to even like clear up my face. Um, like now I barely like, probably if you want to pinpoint, I probably have some blemishes, but I don't have like the acne or the breakouts or anything. It's just like, it just makes your skin glow and it makes you feel better. And I'm especially, and also like have one green smoothie a day. Um, I don't necessarily have one every day because I eat pretty healthy, but definitely if you want to see results, have a green smoothie a day, like with avocado, spinach, um, you know, make it however you want. Uh, you can put ginger, turmeric, you know, fresh. Those are also really, really good for you. Um, and I've just been extremely careful with this because as you probably have heard my story, if you go back to one of my first videos of my story, and how I was like so burnt out and tired and had like all of these things like problems and issues in my life and then of what I did to change it and become the person I am now and the diet is a big one and especially because I've been I've always been like super dry like if you've seen a lot of my videos I'm like oh my throat is like so dry or um my eyes get really dry like it is so bad or um like I get like my joints are like super achy and I like have like this you know fatigue or like all of these things and I had wondered like why am I like this I feel like I'm 90 years old and I was like 15 and anyways I never figured it out till like recently I finally went to the doctor and I was like you know what I need to figure all this out because I can't just keep on living this way and I went to the eye doctor and they were like well it could be it's called like Sjogren's self syndrome, which is like an autoimmune issue. And I was like, okay, well, finally I have a name for like all this stuff because every, all the symptoms I have, like check with what that was or what it is. And medically speaking, there's no um, cure for an autoimmune. It's just like, you have to live with it. But naturally there is. And I've known people or some ladies I've watched on YouTube that have had it and they fix their diet, they eat right, they take out the stress and they fix it. And that's something that I've been working on and I've definitely been seeing results. And I, I mean, I know I'll be completely healed. I'm claiming it, I am completely healed. I'm claiming that, but well, I mean, I'm going to see results because I already have. All of these things actually work, you know, and I'll like take some steps back because I'll like not be as careful with my diet as I should or I'll get like super stressed out and then like things will you know resurface but it's just the consistency that matters you'll see yourself gaining traction and this works it's worked for me so I know it works so you can't argue about that <laughs> so also another important thing is to get your 10 hours of sleep a day because as women we need sleep we aren't the same as men okay and our hormones, they actually, I've been, I was listening to this doctor and he's saying our hormones replenish from like 9 p.m. to like 1 a.m. So 
as women, we need more sleep, but it can't be midnight to nine o'clock for our nine hours of sleep. Um, we'll be much healthier if we go to bed at nine and wake up at six for that nine hours of sleep, because that's when our hormones can actually replenish because it takes time. A woman's hormones, it takes a lot longer of time to replenish than for men for testosterone. So a woman who like goes to bed at midnight and gets up at nine, yeah, it's nine hours of sleep, but she'll feel tired and down and like just not at her peak. And that's because her hormones, even though she slept nine hours, they didn't get to replenish because that wasn't the time period needed. So anyways, I hope that helps you guys because I used to be a night owl and get all this stuff done at night and it was not good. So definitely do that. And don't do screens two hours before bed. If you like struggle with tired eyes or any of that, or just not being able to sleep at night, it's because the blue light from our phones um, make our melatonin de decrease. So we actually don't get the sleep hormone to be able to fall asleep. It actually wakes us up instead. So definitely try your best. I know it's really hard, but just try your best to minimize the phone time two hours before bed. And then, um, and then here are some other things just for regular health that definitely help. But for conversations, don't be triggered. Just like be present, work on emotional presence. I know this is a hard one. It's something I'm still working on, but just imagine yourself looking at yourself from an outside view, you know, and you know, the world is happening, but you know, there's so much we can control it. We're here just for such a short amount of time. Like if you've seen my last video on the untethered soul, that book review, you'll, you'll realize how powerful this is. Just being present, no matter if someone else is just like really mad and yelling or whatever the thing is, just to let it pass. And for this, I'm definitely talking to myself because I can take those things and get super stressed out. So don't think I'm an angel in this because I'm still working at it. And definitely work on you from the inside because it's from the inside out that everything happens. You know, anyone can put on a ton of makeup and look conventionally beautiful, but does she feel that inside? And I think a woman that's just glows from the inside, like what can be better than that, honestly? So work on your mental health. So if you look up Tony Robbins priming exercise, do that, it's like 10 minutes long, do that every day. Um, honestly, it changes your DNA because they say there's so much studies on this. And if you wanna dive deeper into this, look, in, look into my course, it's in the description below. And I have like a whole hour long masterclass on exactly the science behind this and everything. And it is so good. It's life changing. Um, but it's about how our mind cannot tell the difference between what we're thinking and what we're actually doing. So like they can hook up people training for a marathon and have them vividly visualize it. And all the brain waves will show the exact same as if they were actually running the marathon. So if you can imagine yourself, um, just at your healthiest and happiest and most vibrant self and just living your best life, you know, that will turn off your bad genes and turn on your good genes. And it's crazy. The mind, when they say the mind controls everything, it literally does. It will turn off the bad genes that are causing you your autoimmune or whatever it is and will turn on your healthy genes. So it's crazy powerful. And... I have this meditation that will change your life in my course also, but if you wanted a free version that's kind of, you know, it's a bit different, but it's still good, is Tony Robbins priming exercise. And then do affirmations. Honestly, a lot of people think that they're bad, but the thing is, what are we doing in our mind every day? We're like, oh, I'm so lonely, I'm so like depressed, I'm so, nobody likes me, I do everything wrong. Oh, why did I do this? Why did I say this? Like, we're always saying negative affirmations. So what's wrong with doing some positive ones? There's nothing wrong with that. Like, the Bible or religious books are full of positive ones. So instead, be like, I am loved. You know, God loves me so much. People love me. I bring so much value to this world. You know, I make people happy and make the world a better place. Like, you know, or just take affirmations from, like, the Bible itself. Like, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, O God. You know, like say that to yourself in the morning. You know, affirmations do work. They retrain your mind. 
And when you can retrain your mind, you retrain your life. And then do your quiet time. So like have a little bit of time every day where you meditate and get quiet and pray and read and, you know, study and meditate on, you know, God's word or whatever you decide. And it really changes your life. You know, just that quietness and getting a zoomed out perspective. And, you know, have a little vision board, you know, of your positive intentions of what you want in your life. I go deep into this in my course also, how you can create this really easy and really powerful. But you can just put on a piece of paper and just put four you know, segments of your life. Like one can be love, one can be um, money, one can be you know, just your life in general and fitness, and one like your walk with God. Um, and you know, put a couple pictures and a couple points and just look at it every day, and, or twice a day, or three times a day, and really like the positive intention will really help in your life, I promise. And yeah, and then do journaling, like whenever you get triggered or whatever, I have this amazing six step process. It's in the course also, if you wanna go deeper into that. Um, but it's just like how to overcome your triggers so that you're not having to protect yourself from everyone and everybody. And you can just be the most confident person in the room and literally live your best life. Because if we can get rid of resentment and anger and all of this stuff, that is what will make us healthy. You know, um, there's nothing that ages a person more than resentment and anger. And you can see it on your face. And also when someone lets it all go, you can also see that on their face too. So anyways, this went a little longer than I was expecting, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and will get a lot of value from it. Definitely put these things into um, practice, write it down. Um, get a piece of paper, write it down, and make your intention because this is your life. And I want you to live the best one you possibly can. So anyhow, I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.